Do you need a computer science degree in 2020 to be a successful software developer? The answer, no, but... Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's video is a little bit less technical than my usual videos, but it addresses a question that I get from a lot of students and maybe would be future students. And I think it's relevant to all my students, so I think we need to talk about it. College is expensive. Universities are expensive. Tuition is rising. It varies a bit depending on where you go to school and what you study, but it is expensive. And so it makes sense that people are starting to question whether this is a good use of my money. The right answer, I think, depends on what you study, your situation in life, and what you hope to get out of it. You might come to very different conclusions in different fields. In this video, of course, I'm going to focus on computing because that's my world. So the question is, do I need a CS degree? Or let's say I have a degree in blank in biology, chemistry, social science, history, psychology, whatever, and I just took a programming class or I just discovered a video online and I love programming and I want to do it for my life. Do I need to go back to the university and get another degree? Do I need to study CS in college? Now, quick bias check, those of you that watch my videos regularly will know that I am a professor. I'm on the faculty of the School of Computing at Clemson University. I'm also a visiting faculty at Boto University here in Jaborone, Botswana. So I make part of my living from students getting traditional university degrees. So while I plan to give you what I think is an unbiased answer, and I think it's a right answer, I just want to be completely transparent and let you know who's paying my bills and where I'm coming from. Also, just out of curiosity, I know a lot of you are current university students or have been university students. And I'm just curious where my audience is coming from. So if you don't mind, I put a pinned comment down below. If you could let me know where you go to school or where you went to school, or if you learned on your own and you didn't study CS in college, I'm just really curious to see what background you're all coming from. So comment below really quickly and then come back and watch the rest of the video. Thanks. So do you need a CS degree in 2020? No, you don't. Well, I really, I think it depends. And I actually think that this question misses the point. I don't think that the degree is the point. That said, having a degree does have some benefits. You will have some people out there that will filter job applicants based on whether they have a degree or not. I personally wouldn't because I've known a lot of programmers with and without degrees. And I personally don't feel like that is a really good rule. For me, it's just one variable in a much bigger picture, but some people will, especially early on in your career. Look, just because something is dumb and doesn't make any sense doesn't mean that people won't do it. And of course, attending university can have other impacts on your life socially, developmentally, and all of that. I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm just focused on jobs, careers, employability in this video. So right now, and in the last decade, and in the years to come, computer science-related skills are in high demand. The world needs us. The world needs our skills, and having a computer science degree might get you a job. But you're not just looking to get a job. You're looking for a career. You're looking for enjoyable, profitable work that you can do for years to come that will allow you to make a meaningful impact on this world. And a piece of paper from a university is not going to be enough to let you do that. For that to happen, you need skills, rare and valuable skills. You need to be fluent enough in the language, the tools, and the concepts of computing so that you can apply those skills, you can apply those things to solve hard problems with technology. If you can do that and you have reasonably good personal skills and decent personal hygiene, you can have a great career in this field. These skills are in high demand. There aren't enough good developers to go around in this world. And so if you are good at what you do and aren't a stinky jerk, people are going to be willing to pay you to use those skills to make them a lot of money. So the degree is not the point, people. Mastery is the point. Your degree doesn't tell me whether or not you have mastered anything. I see a lot of students, I work with a lot of students, and I can tell you that a lot of students make it through computer science degrees with skills that are mediocre at best. Trust me, I do my best to keep this from happening in my classes, but it happens. A student somehow manages to pull a C in my class, and guess what? The university lets them graduate. On the other hand, I know a lot of very highly qualified, very skilled professional programmers who don't have computer science degrees. In fact, one of the best programmers I ever worked with, he had a degree, but his degree was in music, and it didn't stop him from having a great career and being very effective at what he was doing, which was developing software. The point is mastery, and you don't need a university degree to master computing skills. 
and it's easier now. Look, friends, back in 1994, when I was trying to teach myself how to program, it was hard. I remember going to the library, and for you younger kids, that's a big building where they used to keep books. So I would go to the library and look up all the programming books they had, and like, I remember there being like 10, and none of them were in C or Pascal, which were the only two languages that I actually had a compiler for at the time. The ones they had were also outdated. Half of them were assembly books. And so I had to go out and actually buy books. I had to buy compilers. And I didn't have online tutorials. I didn't have websites. I didn't have Stack Overflow to give me hints as to what was wrong with my program. Instead, I had a neighbor down the street. I was lucky enough to have a neighbor who was a professional programmer. And so you can imagine teenage me walking down the street and being like, uh, Rod, I'm so sorry, but uh, I know I'm an annoying pain, but could you please look at this and tell me what's wrong with this pointer? And thankfully, Rod was great. Rod still is great. And I just want to publicly thank him for putting up with annoying teenage me. But the point is, is back then it was hard. Today, it is super easy. The web is full of free content. There are free tools everywhere. And of course, there are nice, friendly, bald people out there making videos that teach you how to program this stuff for free. And of course, there's this explosion of other options. You got online degrees, online courses, micro degrees. You have a lot of options out there. So why do people still get computer science degrees? One reason is that the traditional university education still has some advantages. The first is going it alone is tricky. There is a ton of material out there, but you may not know what you need to study. You don't know what you need to learn, and a university gives you a plan. It gives you a structure. It helps you. It's got a roadmap. This is what you need to do in order to learn this material that you need to master. That plan is going to include algorithms, data structures, operating systems, databases, probably some networks and some software engineering topics. And when you finish, you will have covered the basics. That's one of the nice things about people who have CS degrees is when I'm interviewing them, I've got a pretty good idea that they have at least some background in all the basics. On the flip side, people who go it alone sometimes miss stuff. They sometimes have some serious holes in their expertise. That doesn't mean that they can't pick them up later. That's just one possible thing that sometimes happens when you're going it alone. The second advantage is that a lot of people don't have the self-discipline to go it alone. There's a lot to learn. It's not easy stuff. And the traditional university education, of course, gives you some structure. It gives you a group of peers. It gives you advisors. It gives you coaches. And depending on your personality, that can make the difference between whether you stick with it or not. Okay, so what am I saying? Am I saying that all of you university students out there should go full Zuckerberg and drop out? No. Am I saying that all of you that are learning on your own need to enroll in a university today? Well, no, not unless you want to, unless it makes sense. What I'm saying is that you need to come up with a plan that is going to help you master the material needed in this field. It's not about a piece of paper. It's not even about getting a job. It's about keeping that job. It's about having a successful, enjoyable career. It's about mastering your craft and having a successful career and life. That is the point. And for what it's worth, that's why I make these videos. So if you're a university student, use the time you have. Use those four years or six years or as many years as I took to finish. Use that time, the access to great resources, the access to great peers, the access to your professors. Use that time to make sure that you get the most out of it. Make sure that you leave with formidable skills that allow you to have a great career. And if you aren't, if you're learning on your own, if you're choosing to go it alone, don't worry about it. You have so many options. Just go out there, learn rare and valuable skills, and people will pay you to use those skills to change the world. So that's my rant. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped. Like if you liked it. Share it if you know someone who could benefit from it. Subscribe so you don't miss my next video on some rare and valuable skill that's going to help you be more employable. And until then, I'll see you later.